blue skies where the sky is blue, well, all red. Not a war game, it's economic, competitive, airline game, coming up. Hi, it's Taryn. And Stella from Liverpool University. Today we are going to talk about blue skies. So, please do not judge the book by its cover. We're going to go through the the theme, the overview, and what we think of it. So, uh, this is basically around 1979, where in America, where it started commercial airlines. Yeah, so the game represents deregulation of the airline routes, and we're all competing airline companies trying to get in and get as much market share as possible. So let me share you because I really <coughs> like the opening paragraph of the rule book. <clears throat> ah, the 70s, leather suits, bell bottom pants, Charlie's Angels, Star Wars, the first one, Battlestar Galactica, the first one. There were lots of memorable moments in the 70s. There is one event that shaped our future that many people do not remember. The deregulation of the US airline industry. Industry, I should say. So, uh, what is the game about? So, the game is all about getting as much market share as you can out on the board. You want to send as many passengers around as you can and you want to get a stranglehold over different portions of the US market. And <clears throat> the game is really all about that. In each round, each player is going to place gates on the board and they have a total of six money effectively to spend on gates and that's these numbers here. So you can pick any locations you want, place gates on it, so that would cost two, that would cost one, and Let's say I went in here in San Francisco, this would cost three. If you've got any money left over, you score it as points. And throughout the board, you're constantly sharing passengers with other airlines. So whereas this local airline did have these two passengers, as soon as I get in, we split them. And they're split evenly with the gates on the left getting the excess. So each player will do that. Then we add more passengers to the board. So each player gets to play one card from hand. Uh, which lets them influence where the passengers are going to go. And uh, in doing that, you then draw passengers from the bag. And you go one at a time. If you get a green bag, a green cube, you keep drawing. If you get a red cube, you stop. And there's about, there's 100 red cubes in here and 25 green cubes. So most of the time, you're just going to be adding one passenger to the board. But sometimes you'll get two in a row and in one incredible moment in the game we played yesterday we got eight passengers in a row we somehow <laughs> yes. drew a third of the green cubes all in a row um and i doubt you could play this game for years and i doubt you'll replicate that <laughs> have you <clears throat> thought about getting a, a tatsalado it would seem to be a good day for that because i okay. was in on that airport okay that's... you probably shouldn't buy one because uh, that wasn't your no. airport yeah no no it wasn't uh, but back to the game, so everyone will play one card and then one card gets drawn at random for each player as well. And so this will start to populate the board and then everyone scores one point for every passenger that they have. And you keep track on your little income tracker. Everyone goes up on points. Yeah, one step for each passenger they have. So it's a very simple scoring mechanism. Uh, and then you hand the first player around and the game keeps going like that. At about the midway point, when someone gets to 30 points, there's a little bit of a, an even up where players who are behind get to add passengers to their preferred places out on the board and get to mulligan their hand if they want. And you can also do that once at a three point cost per game as well. The game will end once someone has at least 100 points or has placed all of their gates. And then in addition to the income for your passengers, you score majorities for the different regions on the board. So the southwest here, for example, you've got five airports here. For each of your gates, you add up the score that is shown in the top right corner for that region. And whoever has the highest score in that area gets 
12 or 14 or 15 points. Second place gets six, unless it's a two player game, then that one's not scored. And you do that across the seven regions and whoever has the most points for passengers through the game and majorities at the end is the winner. This game has got a lot of interactions. Yes. You see where, where your opponent plays the gate and think that mm, maybe they have the card here to add the passengers and you want to try to get advantage out of that. Yeah. There's a lot of those and there's a lot of, you know, stealing passengers when you build your thing. Let's say if yeah. I go there, I would put my gate there and then some of Taron's passengers will go to me. Yes. One would come over here. And certainly early in the game, you're going to score each passenger that you lock down seven or eight times, depending on how many rounds there's going to be. Um, later in the game, it becomes all about these majorities. Mm -hmm. And you've got to keep an eye on the majorities early mm -hmm. because <clears throat> it's hard to make up a big deficit at the end. You can also buy out, by the way. Let's see here. This is the government airline, which I bought buy out for the cost of it six. It yep. also says how many cards is all of the San Francisco cards. So this is three, this is four and so on. And then the majority worth um, on, depending on these numbers. So this gate is worth four, for example. Yep. Yes, not all mm -hmm. airline or airports are equal. So like Correct. the major hub at Atlanta has there's five no cards in this deck. The, you can't even no buy out the yeah. locals. Um, Honolulu and St. Louis, much smaller airports, only one card in the deck. And so you've, you've factored that in as well for where you're likely to get the most money or the most competition. And the income was, I was trailing behind, so I got to place passengers. I didn't probably even utilize that properly. I still didn't mm. do that well, but I really enjoyed the interaction in between players. It's quick every round, so, you know, people will, or somebody would get put the six worth of gates, go to the next player, next player, and then that press and then start again, then that player would play a card, add passengers, and pa add passengers, and then income. So it's really quick each round. Yep. The game's pretty quick. It's not complicated, but the interaction is very high, and you're gonna have to think which one do you think other people will put the cards, and how you benefit, benefit yourself the most. So let's say you put this one here and then you steal one of my passengers and then my income goes down by one and your income goes up by one. Mine would go up, but then if I've got no other airports in the northeast, then I'm not then that may get me three passenger points across the course of the game, but won't earn me any of these big points at the end. Yep. The game, the first I saw the game, it looks like a war game because um, the, the box just reminds me of, you know, uh, a war type game, if you see here. But it is not. Uh, and real Grande games don't usually have war games, uh, type of war games produced. And then you look at the inside and I was like, it is... This is not a pretty game. Yeah, like, yeah, let's, yeah. let's get let's that just, part yes. of it out of the yeah, way. Elephant in the room, yeah. <clears throat> It's it's an ugly game, and I don't think there's any other way to, to put it. And if you want, I wouldn't say ugly, ugly, but if you if you want a really thematic experience that feels like the airlines and feels like the seventies, this isn't it. It feels like you're playing a game on an Excel spreadsheet. Because it is actually the theme of the seventies. <coughs> it looks like well, it looks like that in the seventies, basically. And then if it's a game on the seventies, it looks like this as well. Yeah. And I think I mean you add to this. You know, some of, the, some of the layout issues, there are cities that are pretty vague in terms of their location to where they actually are in the world. Um, these regions are kind of sprawled around and not very prominent. And you know, this is the biggest airport in the game. This is the smallest one, and they look identical. And I you've see. got to look at these numbers. So... Yeah, you know, it's it's not pretty. The design graphic wise. design isn't yep. that intuitive, yep. and but if you can get past that, we both quite enjoy this game, right? Yeah, yeah. So take the designing um, aside, then uh, this is actually well, you know, as I say, are you judging the book by its cover? If you do that, you'll be surprised because this is actually a really good game with high interaction and. A lot of replayability is because of these cards that you play and how you're going to build your empire or gates empire yeah. anywhere in the boards. Yeah, it's simple. 
it's fundamentally, uh, it, it's really an area control sort of game and an area influence sort of game. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're constantly making, you're given simple, quick decisions and trying to work out what's going to score you the most points in the long run. Balance out passengers versus the cards you've got versus the end game bonuses. And I mean, we played a four player game across seven rounds, so it goes pretty quickly as well. And I think it is, yeah, it, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I don't usually play a lot of area control games. I really enjoy this. So mm. highly recommend should you play, you decide for yourself. Let us know in the comment sections below if you have played a game that maybe doesn't look that pretty, especially these days and age, you want double layer board, for example, like in here, or something like that. Um, any games that you play that doesn't look that attractive, but you surprise yourself when you play it, like this one. Or, you know, you play something similar to this. Also let us know, or maybe you have played. Write in the comment sections below, please. And if you find this video useful, if you can, please help us, please, by hitting that like button and subscribe to us and hit the bell. And again, if you have anything you want to say, if you want to tell, if you watch this video and you want to tell the next person, please write in the comment sections below. That would be really helpful. And um, subscribe to us, hit the bell. I did say that. <laughs> I'm also on Instagram, so hopefully I'll find you there as well. And hopefully we will see you in our next videos. Bye!